Here are a few of the strangest leaders who've been in charge. Number 9. Zangdi, Emperor When the Renaissance bloomed all over Europe in 1505, Emperor Zangdi acquired the throne of China at the age of 14. Before his reign as emperor, he studied Confucian literature under the strict supervision of tutors, and all of them thought he would be a ruler who truly cared about his people and his land. Yeah, they were in for a surprise. Apparently, the only thing keeping Zhangdi in line was his father, because as soon as the former emperor passed, Zhangdi rebelled. Being 14 years old, he became a bit obsessed with women. A 14-year-old boy obsessed with women. That's just interesting. His harem grew so large that some of the women were moved from his personal chambers to a zoo cage in the Forbidden City. He also had a vivid imagination and made himself a tiny replica of the Forbidden City. Here he would pretend to be other people. For example, he'd pretend to be a vendor selling vegetables. When he wanted playmates, he would have his servants play along. Okay. Number 8. Sapa Murat Niazov to say Sapar Murat Niazov was peculiar is an understatement. For starters, he had a gigantic golden statue of himself built. Enough said, right? No, no. Until 2006, Niazov was Turkmenistan's absolute ruler. They called him Turkmenbashi, or father of the nation. As he himself ordered his country to do. Eccentric as he was, pretty much everything that came out of uh, Turkmenbashi's mouth became law and had to be obeyed as such. This guy also thought that it was a good idea to spend billions of dollars on horses as he was a fan of horse races. It's no surprise that he declared April 27 a public holiday, Horse Day. His creativity when it came to public holidays did not stop there. He also declared July 10th Melon Day, because melons are the country's main export and, well, anything you say becomes the law of the land. Why not, right? In 2003, Turkmenbashi banned beards, fearing that anyone with a beard was an Islamic fundamentalist. Also, he renamed the month April after his mother and the month of January after himself. He also feared that he could be subject of a coup de tête. So, to prevent this possible scenario, he decided to create three secret police forces to counter-spy each other. However, people say there are actually four secret polices, but the fourth one is actually secret. Yeah, okay. Number 7. Louis XIV Louis XIV of France, also known as the Sun King, was certainly one of the most eccentric leaders in the world's history, mostly because of his age when he was crowned and how long he ruled. He was crowned when he was only four years old and he ruled for a little over 72 years. He held the throne longer than any other monarch in Europe, ever. That in itself is a small miracle since most kings pass of very suspicious circumstances after a certain age. But even with lots of adversaries and detractors, Louis XIV kept living and living. How could this be? Well. Louis XIV actually was pretty smart. There was a civil war in France and it made a young Louis very paranoid. He thought anyone could invade and attempt to take his throne by force. When he was 28, Louis decided to move his entire court to the Palace of Versailles, knowing that people who conspired against monarchs were other nobles. This way, Louis could keep them all under control and strict surveillance. You don't earn the reputation of being the longest reigning European ruler by disclosing your true intentions. He claimed, he moved away from Paris to live a more elegant and rich lifestyle. Of course, this made his courtesans want to follow him and acquire favors. Number 6. Francisco Solano Lopez Francisco Solano Lopez was the son of the first constitutional president of the Republic of Paraguay. While his father was in office, Francisco Solano Lopez was designated commander-in-chief of the army. As a military man, he traveled to Europe to make alliances and to get Paraguay recognized by other nations as an independent country. While in France, he studied strategy and he also bought a bunch of cool state-of-the-art weapons for the Paraguayan army. When Francisco came back from Europe, he started training the army and developed a close relationship with his men, motivating them to follow him into one of the worst wars in recent Latin American history, the War of the Triple Alliance. Basically, Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay joined forces against Paraguay. 
Paraguay stood its ground for almost 60 years, during which thousands of men lost their lives. During the war, Francisco was subject to at least two coup de day attempts. Unfortunately for him, his own family members attempted these coups. So Francisco did to them what he would do to any other war criminal. He had them executed. In less than three years, Francisco Solano Lopez had at least two of his brothers killed for treason, along with judges, bishops, priests, civilians, and at least 200 foreigners part of the conspiracy. Number five, Than Shui. As the head of the Burmese government since 1992, Than Shui is known for his megalomania. In 2002, Than Shui decided that the capital city of Myanmar, Yangon, had to be moved to a greenfield site hundreds of miles away. Then, he wanted to create a city from scratch. However, no city can be built that quickly, so in 2006, he moved his government to Nipido, an uninhabited city with no running water or electricity. But why do such a thing? Why not wait? In the beginning, people said that Than Shui moved the new capital, finally finished in 2012, as a strategic move since Nipido is better located than Yangon, so it's less likely to fall in an armed attack. Sounds reasonable, right? Turns out that the real reason for the drastic move was that in 2002, Than Shui's astrologer predicted that he was going to lose power unless he moved the government to the jungle. So he did. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to us either. Number four, Ni Win. For 26 years, Ni Win ruled Burma, now known as Myanmar. Ni Win was the chairman of the Burmese Socialist Party for many years as a result of a coup d'etat. He was a ruthless ruler, and he treated politics how a chess player would treat each move, with precision. However, if one thing can be said about Ni Win, it's that he was undoubtedly eccentric. The bright son of Burma, as he called himself, married seven times, and two of those times he married the same woman. On the advice of a wizard, he regularly bathed in dolphin's blood to keep young. Um, that's just insane. Maybe the weirdest thing about Ni Win was his obsession with the number 9. He thought 9 was his lucky number, and everything important in his life had been associated with it. When you believe in something like that, it's only logical for you to modify your country's entire currency system to revolve around that number, right? He decided all banknotes should be divisible by 9. For example, instead of a 100 cat note, there was a 90 cat note. And instead of a 50 cat note, there was a 45 cat note. Well, that's one way to get people in your country better at math. Number three, King Charles VI. King Charles VI ruled England in the 14th century. And in case you were wondering, no, Shakespeare didn't write about him. Anyway, Charles VI of England was, as many other rulers at the time, quite superstitious. So how superstitious was he? Well, in 1392, he was leading a party against the army of a French duke. Along the way, a mysterious old man dressed in white told him that he had to be careful because he was being betrayed. The king turned and immediately stabbed one of his own knights. Reasonable, right? Apparently, these episodes kept happening. Charles would encounter ominous visitors, and then he would have an episode of madness. As the years passed, these spells became longer and longer. Basically, he was just insane. Charles began to be convinced he was made of glass, so he moved super slow and very carefully. He wouldn't go up or down the stairs, fearing he'd fall and shatter. Not sure if that's the weirdest thing we've heard yet, but it's close. Number two, Farouk of Egypt. Farouk I was only 16 when he took the throne, and before his reign, he studied in London to become a great leader. Well, apparently he spent too little time there because his leadership skills were lacking, to say the least. At the start of his rule, many people praised him because of his boyish charm and British manners, but soon Farouk showed his true colors. He started immediately indulging in a ridiculously luxurious lifestyle. At one point, he consumed 600 oysters per week. He also spent a huge sum of money on red cars. In 1951, just a year before he was overthrown, he bought the Star of the East Diamond, a gigantic 94 karat diamond that obviously cost a ton of money. Farouk owned nice cars, ate the best food, and owned one of the world's rarest diamonds. You'd think that a leader with so much would be satisfied with his own possessions and only his alone, right? Yeah, however, one of Farouk's most memorable quirks was his kleptomania. He was a petty pickpocketer as he stole several small items from his staff constantly. He actually stole a watch from the pocket of Winston Churchill. 
Churchill obviously was not amused. Number one, the Kim Dynasty. Yeah, we had to include the whole family here because really, the entire family seems crazy. The Kim Dynasty has been ruling North Korea for more than 50 years now. It originated with Kim Il-sung, the first leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Then, you guys remember Kim Jong-il, right? And of course, we all know about Kim Jong-un. We're used to hearing news about them, and it's always not good news. Undoubtedly, uh, nuclear threats have been the theme lately, but we obviously can't forget the weird traits this family has. For example, Kim Jong-il and Kim Jong-un are very passionate about their hobbies. While Kim Jong-un famously loves basketball, which explains that interesting relationship with Dennis Rodman, his late father obsessed over movies reportedly owning at least 20,000 tapes. He aspired to be a cinematographer and wrote a book titled On the Art of Cinema, a manual meant for North Korean cinematographers. However, he was still unhappy with the quality of the movies being produced in his country. Kim Jong-il decided to kidnap famous South Korean directors to make better movies. Once he had them under his control, Kim Jong-il forced them to do a communist remake of the film Godzilla. Here's what's next. But his love for Swiss cheese eventually spiraled out of control when he became addicted to it. In 2014, Kim got upset at his chefs because they couldn't replicate the mental, his favorite kind of Swiss cheese, properly. So he sent officials to a French culinary school to learn how to do cheese the right way. 